Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Dummy Loads. In this short presentation, we'll provide a brief technical overview of what dummy loads are, how they're used in radio frequency applications, and how they're characterized or measured. This presentation assumes a very basic understanding of voltage standing wave ratio and return loss. If you're not familiar with these concepts, or if you'd like a brief review, you might want to watch the presentation Understanding Visual and Return Loss before beginning this presentation. Let's start by discussing terminators, also called terminations. These are one port passive devices that present a known stable impedance at a port or at the end of a line or cable. And typically this is the so-called system impedance, which in most RF applications is either 50 ohms or somewhat less often 75 ohms. Terminators are widely used in many applications, but there are two main ways that terminators are used in RF test and measurement. The first is to prevent radio frequency signals from entering or exiting a port, and thus they help to avoid interaction with the external electromagnetic environment. One example of where this is important is when measuring the displayed average noise level or DANL of a spectrum analyzer. We want to be sure that we are measuring the analyzer's internally generated noise, not external noise received via the analyzer's open RF input. The second main application of terminators in test and measurement is to provide a stable, well-known impedance at a port of a device under test. For example, when we measure between two ports of three port devices, such as directional couplers or duplexers, it's good engineering practice to terminate the unused port. These unused ports are terminated during normal operation, and leaving them unterminated can sometimes impact measurement results. It's very important to keep in mind that terminations are generally used only for low power applications, typically less than about plus 30 dBm or one watt. They are not designed for, nor intended to be used for, sinking or dissipating higher levels of RF power. In order to sink higher RF power levels, a special type of termination is required, and this type of termination is commonly called a dummy load. These are terminations which can safely dissipate powers on the order of low watts to many kilowatts or more. Dummy loads do this by converting incoming RF power into heat and then dissipating that heat. Heat is absorbed most often by means of non-inductive resistors and is dissipated by means of one or more cooling mechanisms. We'll cover these in more detail later in this presentation. Like other RF terminations, dummy loads also present a near-perfect impedance match to the RF source or transmitter, meaning that, ideally, they reflect little to none of the incoming power. In addition, dummy loads are designed not to radiate the received signal, and thus are sometimes also referred to as dummy antennas. Note that in reality, dummy loads usually still do radiate some of the received power. Most dummy loads are coaxially connectorized, such as the image shown here, but dummy loads with flange-style terminations are used when terminating waveguides. As mentioned a moment ago, one of the primary applications of dummy loads is to replace an antenna during transmitter testing. Recall that a dummy load acts as a perfectly matched antenna, which does not radiate, and thus using a dummy load helps to avoid creating interference to other spectrum users. Perhaps more importantly, a dummy load also prevents damage from high levels of reflected power. This could occur if the transmitter were operated into an open, short, or highly mismatched load. Another application of dummy loads is enabling very accurate measurements of the transmitter output power. When placed at the antenna feed point, a dummy load can also be used to make a quick test of cables, connectors, etc. between the transmitter and the antenna. Since the dummy load is a perfect antenna, a high visoire during transmission can indicate problems in the conducted signal path between the transmitter and the antenna feed point. Dummy loads are generally not user configurable, 
but some do incorporate additional useful features. The most common of these is some type of visual display showing the amount of input power received by the load. Another feature is an RF sample port, which allows measurement or analysis of the input signal. In most cases, the signal at this port has been attenuated by mid-tens of dB, but care should still be taken and levels should be verified before connecting a dummy load sample port to a sensitive RF measurement instrument, such as a spectrum analyzer. A less common, although very useful feature, is an interlock loop. This loop, typically in the form of a simple multi-pin cable, can signal to the source or another external device when the temperature of the dummy load crosses a defined threshold. This allows the transmitter to be shut down in the event that the dummy load can no longer safely sync the received RF power. Next, let's talk about dummy load characteristics, starting with frequency range and visoire. A dummy load should have a relatively constant, purely resistive impedance over a given frequency range, and this is most often specified in terms of a maximum voltage standing wave ratio, or visoire. In some cases, different visoire values are specified for different subranges. A typical dummy load will have a usable frequency range from DC to several gigahertz, and visoire values over this range are usually 1.5 or less. Loads that can operate over very wide frequency ranges are sometimes called broadband or ultra-broadband loads. There are, however, some loads that have much narrower frequency ranges, since limiting the frequency range sometimes makes it easier to support higher power operation. This is most common in broadcasting applications, where the transmit frequency is essentially fixed or limited to a relatively small range. The other important characteristic of dummy loads is their power handling ability, which is a function of their construction, size, cooling mechanisms, etc. We'll talk more about cooling methods in just a few moments. The maximum power that can be safely dissipated by a dummy load may be specified as a continuous value. For example, a dummy load may be able to dissipate 600 watts indefinitely. But many dummy loads are also, or only, rated for intermittent operation. That is, how many watts can be dissipated for what period of time? This is most often given in the form of a derating curve, such as the one shown here. This load can dissipate up to 1,000 watts for about one minute, or it can dissipate up to 200 watts for up to five minutes. In a similar way, dummy loads may also have different specifications for peak and average power. This can be important when dissipating signals with a high peak to average power ratio, or crest factor which is common in many modern digitally modulated signals. Now let's move on to cooling mechanisms. Most dummy loads are dry, that is, they dissipate heat or are cooled by means of simple convection or movement of air. Dry dummy loads typically have large heat sinks or fins connected to the load resistors, since this maximizes their surface area and allows for more efficient heat dissipation. Dry dummy loads are very common and very widely used. They are relatively inexpensive, have very easy setup, and generally require little to no maintenance. These types of loads are a good choice for lower wattages, but this can include powers even up to the low kilowatt range. Note, however, that as wattage increases, dry dummy loads may be fitted with fans or blowers to increase air circulation. The other type of dummy load is a wet load in which the resistor or resistor bank is cooled by placing it in proximity to or immersing it in some type of liquid. These type of loads can have a variety of shapes and form factors. The biggest advantage of wet dummy loads over dry dummy loads is that wet loads can dissipate more heat. That is, they can be smaller for a given wattage level. The greatest disadvantage of wet dummy loads is that they tend to be higher cost and more complex than simple dry loads. Most often, either water or some type of oil is used as the cooling liquid, 
and the type of liquid often has a significant impact on the power handling capability of the load. It's also worth noting that in some cases, liquid cooling is supplemented by air cooling. Cooling fins or fans may be attached to the liquid container, or a more elaborate radiator or heat exchanger system might be used to circulate the liquid over the load resistors. Our next topic is how to measure or characterize dummy loads. In most cases, dummy loads are measured or characterized using an instrument called a Vector Network Analyzer, or VNA, which can source and measure radio frequency signals. Alternatively, a Spectrum Analyzer and Tracking Generator can be used to obtain similar results. In either case, this is a one-port, or so-called S11 measurement, in which a signal is sent into the load, and the amount of power reflected by the load is measured. This measurement is normally made as a function of frequency, and results are shown either as visoire or as return loss in dB. Note that the stimulus signals from VNAs and tracking generators are usually relatively low power, on the order of tens of milliwatts, and so external amplifiers, attenuators, couplers, etc., are needed if we want to test dummy loads under high power conditions. Another way to measure dummy loads is by means of directional power measurements, that is, by making measurements of forward and reflected power. This can be done using a special directional power sensor placed in line between the source and the load. Or, it can be done using an appropriate directional coupler and a pair of terminating power sensors, one of which measures forward power and one of which measures reflected power. Visoire can then be derived manually or automatically, from these measurements of forward and reflected power. Please see the separate presentation, Understanding Directional Power Measurements, if you'd like to learn more about how these types of measurements are made. Let's compare two dummy load measurements. Here, we're looking at visoire as a function of frequency. Both loads are specified as having a visoire of less than 1.2, over the frequency range of 1 MHz to 500 MHz. Our first load has some small variation over this range, but visoire remains between 1.1 and 1.2. Our second load starts with a much lower visoire, but only remains below the specified limit for frequencies under about 150 MHz. Let's end with a brief summary. A dummy load is a special type of RF terminator that's designed to dissipate or sink large amounts of power. By large, we mean more than about one watt. The amount of power that can be safely dissipated by a dummy load can be specified either for continuous operation or over a defined period of time. Ideally, a dummy load presents a purely resistive matched load over a wide frequency range. Dummy loads can be divided into two general categories based on how they dissipate heat. Dry loads are low cost, simple, and are used for lower powers. They dissipate heat via simple air convection. Wet loads, on the other hand, have higher cost and complexity since they use liquids to dissipate heat. But they're able to handle higher powers than dry loads. Three different types of test and measurement instruments can be used to measure or quantify dummy loads. The most common is Vector Network Analyzers, or VNAs. The combination of a Spectrum Analyzer and Tracking Generator can also be used in a similar way. And finally, directional or terminating power sensors can be used to calculate visoir or return loss for measurements of both forward and reflected power. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Dummy Loads. If you'd like to learn more about RF components, how they're measured, or about test and measurement instruments from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at rodi-schwartz.com.